We're going to compare the Rico Theta Z1 workflow against the Rico Theta X, the new camera. This is using the JPEG images only for a rapid workflow. For both cameras, we are using the time shift mode. In the case of the Rico Theta Z1, if you don't have the time shift plugin enabled, you may need to enable it uh, in the uh, camera so that when we go on site, you can select it. So right now I'm using the desktop software, which is free. The plugin also for the time shift is free and you must select it as one of the options. If you don't have the time shift plugin installed on your camera, you can go to the plugin store and click on the free plugin and then install it. It's going to communicate with the free desktop software. And at this point, I have my Z1 plugged into the computer that I'm using. This is a one-time installation process only. And after you installed it, it might already be installed in your camera. But if you need to install it, this is the process. It's, then you select it as one of the three plugins to launch at a time of um, boot. Using the camera body, you can cycle between the different plugins. So in this case, I have the time shift plugin in the first position. If I press the shutter button, it's going to select the plugin. The way the plugin works is with one shutter button press, it's going to take two images and automatically delete the photographer from the image. What I'm showing you now is the prep you need to do prior to going on site. When I'm on site, I'm using a Momon TR1, in this case without the weights because the, the ground is fairly flat. I also have a aluminum monopod. I would actually recommend carbon fiber. Um, just pay maybe 20 bucks more for the carbon fiber. This particular monopod is not that great. Extend it to about six feet tall. And then you need to set the, the Z1 into plug-in mode. Long press the mode button to put into plug-in mode. And then in the earlier in the video, I showed you to press the shutter button to select the plug-in. After the plugin is selected, you stand on the side facing the shutter button, press the shutter button. With a single shutter button press, it will take two pictures. So after the first beep, the first picture is taken, walk to the side of the camera and it will automatically take the second picture. Move the monopod to the area that you Next, want to take the second sphere in your virtual tour and repeat the process. This is using the high speed workflow where there is very little setup, very little prep using the inferior JPEG images of the Z1. The Z1 can also take DNG raw images. You can also improve the image quality with just a little prep you may be using HDR or making some adjustments for the fluorescent lighting, which is in this particular shoot. I just switched the camera to the Rico Theta X for comparison. So I took uh, multiple shots with the Z1. I'm now using the Rico Theta X. So this comparison is a bit unfair to the Z1 because the Z1 can take superior DNG images or use HDR or different types of stacking. Uh, this is just a default with the time shift. The Theta X has 11K images versus the 6.7K JPEG images of the Z1 that we're going to compare it against. In addition, the fluorescent lighting in the, the gym that I'm taking the shots in, this is a gym within a corporate office. Um, it, the, the fluorescent lighting is creating a bit of a problem with the color of these images. Just keep in mind that the comparison tours will be, um, it's not showing off the best capability of the camera. It's maybe showing off the super simple when you don't provide any training to your staff and you just send out like the building manager person or someone like that to take some shots of the gym because you're trying to lease or, or sell some office space. 
Back in the office, I plugged the Ricoh Theta Z1 into my laptop computer with a USB-C cable. Then I simply selected all the images from the camera, dragged it onto the desktop of my Windows laptop. I'm going to right click on the first image and open it up with the Ricoh Theta desktop application to do a short inspection. Let's repeat the process with the Rico Theta X. Connect it with a USB-C cable and select the images you want to transfer to your local computer and then drop it into that folder so you can work with the media locally on your computer. Don't try to work with it while it's still on the camera. It's going to be a bit slow um, and you might run into some problems too. So I'm just increase the icon size so I can see which images that I want to take. And it's the ones that is from the gym. You can obviously view it to inspect it while it's on the camera, but you don't want to build your virtual tour with the images still on the camera. So do make sure that you copy it over onto your laptop or your desktop computer and then work with the images when you build the tour from there. I think it will also be safer in case like something goes wrong with the connection. You could theoretically push it up directly from the camera to the virtual tour. But that might be something you want to experiment with when you have more experience uh, and then you're trying to shorten your workflow even more. Uh, but, you know, it, it, there might be some reliability issues in your workflow if you don't copy it to your local computer. You have to experiment on your own if you want to shorten it even further. To make it easy in the comparison, I'm going to prepend the letter X for the images that were taken with the Rico Theta X. And then for the Z1, I'll prepend a Z onto the file name. The left side of the screen is the Rico Theta X. The right side is the Rico Theta Z1. So at this stage, I'm really regretting the glare from the fluorescent lighting, but I've already taken the images and I'm back in the office. So maybe this is kind of a real world test. If you just sent your staff down there to take a picture of the building facilities. I'm using the free software marzipano.net, which is a web-based free software. Uh, you can just drag and drop the images into Marzipano and then export a virtual tour. The recommended workflow would be to use a commercial software because you can't actually host it on Marzipano. Remember that the photographer in the blue that you're seeing is actually taking the video for this tutorial. When you actually take the picture on site, the photographer would be completely eliminated due to the time shift. We're going to have both of these tours uh, up online. So we're going to complete the, the tour here with Marzipano. This is kind of just a quick overview of the workflow to give you a taste for it. But then we have both of these tours publicly available. So you can just compare it side by side and make your own decision as to all, how the images look given the limited workflow. Like we didn't make it the best images from the cameras. Drop your comments below. Let us know what you think.